Good afternoon. I'm Karen Merrill, RBH consultant, and I have the privilege to present today's Lunch and Learn topic, Developing Critical Thinking Skills. So our objective today is to explore the elements of critical thinking, why we need to think critically, skills behind the ability to think well, developing and practicing our critical thinking skills, and we'll leave you with resources to help keep you short, to help keep you sharp, excuse me. So critical thinking, of course, is not about thinking critically or negatively focused. It's, a, it's about being discriminating in evaluating the information we encounter. Was there ever a better time to hone our critical skills? It seems so much often changing information comes at us on a daily basis. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just don't know what to think. The examination of critical thinking has been around a long time. Sometimes we think we've come up with something new to get a handle on, and then we look to see that it's been going on for hundreds of years. So Francis Bacon in 1605 tells us that critical thinking is a desire to seek, the patience to doubt, the fondness to meditate, slowness to assert, readiness to consider, carefulness to dispose and set in order, and hatred for every kind of imposture. When I read this the first time, I have to say, I kind of you know sped through it and didn't take much time to consider each element. And then when I slowed down, it made much more sense. And it occurred to me that slowing down and looking at things carefully are a part of what we're talking about. So the next slide will even look at this a little more, a little more clearly. What is critical thinking? In short, it's thought that's clear, rational, logical, and independent, where we try really and truly to think for ourselves. It's a higher form of thought through the use of analyzing, assessing, and reconstructing. It takes time. In essence, it's thinking on purpose about how we think. It's actually the opposite of this little cartoon, which I think is really quite cute, with the cat and its owner and the litter box, where it says, never, ever think outside the box. In fact, critical thinking is all about thinking outside the box. School is often where we learn to think critically, and many public schools are calling these initiatives common core or project-based learning. As adults, we often have to create our own opportunities to learn about, creative, to, about thinking creatively and flexing our own minds. So more about what it actually is. Mindful communication, being creative in our perspective, having good problem solving skills, the ability to analyze multiple sources of information and honing our ability to free ourselves and understand our own personal bias or self-interest. In previous trainings, we've presented components of mindfulness, being intentional in our thinking processes and communication. That's actually the first bullet point on this slide. We've also explored emotional intelligence, which takes self-knowledge and the ability to use our emotions wisely to help us understand situation and the other parties we're dealing with. 
rather than letting our own emotions get the best of us. If you think about it, emotional intelligence is linked to the last bullet point on this slide as a definition of critical thinking, the freedom from personal bias or self-interest. So here's some famous critical thinking leaders and certainly not an exhaustive list, but what we've, what we've included here, lots of inventors, uh, Albert Einstein, Darwin, Galilei, Martin Luther King, Simone de Beauvoir, Edward Hubble, Sir Isaac Newton, Marie Curie, Stephen Hawking, and Steve Jobs. So if we were together, I'd ask you for more. Off the top of my head, I'd add certainly Abraham Lincoln, and I'd add Eleanor Roosevelt, and I'm sure there's lots of other women that we could add. But clearly, education is not the learning of facts, but it's the learning and teaching the mind to think critically. So what qualities make up good critical thinkers? For me, I'd include the ability to be objective, lots of brain bandwidth, smart, analytical, non-judgmental, not defensive, creative, certainly thinking outside the box. Courageous, takes courage to think in new ways. The willingness to go against current norms and current trains of thought and the ability to set aside our own agenda and ego. So it takes lots of self-knowledge to be a good critical thinker. So what do the traits look like? We looked at characteristics. What are traits? Having an understanding of others' opinions, being able to say, what would it be like if I were in their shoes and I thought like they thought? A concern and a desire to become and remain well-informed. Big challenge in our current environment, our current media environment. Inquisitiveness, you know, they used to say curiosity killed the cat, but curiosity is absolutely a trait of innovative thinkers, critical thinkers, uh, looking towards a wide range of, of issues. Flexibility in considering alternatives, being fluent uh, in our thinking. An honesty in facing our own ten tendencies. You know, we all sit on a continuum, whether we realize it or not, of how, um, how much we have stereotypes in our mind or have some prejudice. So understanding that. The willingness to reconsider and revise our views. So there may be other skills that you can think of. And part of our goal in today's workshop is to stimulate our thinking. So we welcome you to open your thinking during this time together and afterwards. Why do we need it? Why do we need to think critically? We seem to be in such a high level of technology. Why not rely on that? Why would this be something that we'd need to develop? We encounter such a high volume of information every day. We need the ability to know what's important or reliable. It helps us in working effectively and efficiently with others to have a broad understanding and not be trapped in a certain line of thinking. In a competitive marketplace, which we're all in, we need to develop and maintain superior skills to set us apart. And the ability to make good decisions and creatively solve problems is set what sets some people apart and certainly some organizations apart. I just want to say that this first bullet point needs to be emphasized. 
we need to question what information is presented and not take it at face value. We hear so much about fake news and incorrect news and, and all that's confusing. We need to be our own detectives and try to think for ourselves. So if we could, I would ask our first polling question to be, what didn't get in the way of critical thinking? Is it too much information? Is it being curious? Is it our busy, overscheduled lives? Or is it thinking and assuming that we have the answers and that we're right? So now we'll look at what the experts say. What gets in the way of critical thinking? All this information, social networks, social media, radio, television, everything that you can imagine. There's our curiosity question, not questioning with curiosity, taking things at face value. In today's world, between work, home, what our children might be up to, what other family members might be up to, our busy overscheduled lives keep us from taking the time to examine. And oftentimes, we assume we're right. We talk to people that think like us. We listen to newscasters that share our opinion. So we can be pretty insulated from various positions. And then this last one, where we really don't take the time to slow down to consider multiple views or to fully research, because guess what? We're already got a full plate, and this takes some time. It depends on if we see it valuable to us or not. So now we're gonna take a look at different thinking styles. Most of us have a habit of thinking in a certain way. While no style is really better than the other, our goal is to look at different styles, know our own tendencies, and then to build flexibility based on circumstances. So as we talk about these different styles, I challenge you to kind of think about what your inclination is. Are you more analytical? clear thinking, taking it step by step, orderly and rational? Would you say you were more inquisitive? Asking questions, one question brings up another question, curious, alert and interested in the surrounding world. Would you say you were insightful, strategic, reflective, prudent and humble? but with a plan in mind. Do you call yourself an open-minded thinker? Intellectually tolerant and fair-minded? Are you systematic, process-oriented, intuitive, conceptual? Are you one that likes to get things off your plate? So you're a timely thinker, you're efficient, you're reliable and responsive. Or would you say you're truth-seeking? skeptical, more questioning, tough-minded and independent that you don't follow what the crowd says about a situation. Our goal is to need to learn to flex our thinking styles. One situation might call, might call on us to use insight, another to be timely. And of course, the question is, how accurately are we able to judge our own analysis of our thinking style because of what we call the bias that's inherent. So critical thinking in action. What are some skills or thinking styles needed to successfully navigate these scenarios? If we were together, I'd probably have a flip chart, 
I'd present a scenario and then write down your answers. In the absence of that, you're going to uh, kind of get what came to my mind. And I'm hoping that what that does is spur you to then add your own thinking. There are no objective right or wrong responses here. It really is a question of what fits best. A guiding question, at least for me, is what is the primary goal in each situation? What do I want to accomplish? And what will I have to bracket or not focus on in order to achieve this goal? So let's take scenario one. An applicant is preparing for a job interview, thinking about how to explain his or her particular skills and experiences in a way that will be of relevant value to the employer. So there's a lot at stake here. This is um, a, a chance for a position. And so you want to think about what's invested. So in my view, I think about using the analytical style. How can I analyze the situation and present information that's going to appeal to my prospective employer? I'd use insight into thinking how my skills match what they're looking for and also be timely so that I'm efficient and responsive in my response. And you might be able to think of other things as well. So let's look at the second one. A manager is trying to be as objective as possible when settling a dispute by summarizing the alternatives with fairness to all sides in a disagreement. So there's a clue there, of course, fairness to all sides. So you want to be open-minded. Analytical skills are important. And being timely so that you address the situation as, uh, as quickly as you can. So the third scenario is actually on a more personal basis and out of a professional realm but a person is trying to interpret an angry friend's needs expressed through a rush of emotion and snide comments to give that friend some help and support. So this actually involves setting aside our own ego and defensiveness. So we're gonna be open-minded, insightful, truth seeking and systematic in terms of what's the most appropriate. So these examples are uh, courtesy of a work called Think Critically. And we encourage you uh, as your time allows to check out these resources so that you continue to hone your skills. And you might see some other styles that fit that. I think what's also important about that is that we can see and what their idea is is that different situations call for different for different styles so we'll take it one step further and look at what the decision making process is in critical thinking so we call a good decision making process an open feedback loop in other words it's not fixed but it's open to alteration and change. This is a process where we're continually feeding new information into this circle, as well as insights into what seems like an already made decision to ensure and to check that we've made the right choice. So first we define the problem. What is the problem? And why is it happening? We develop a plan. What are we going to do about this? How will we take action? We're gonna implement this plan, carry out the intervention, and then evaluate. Did the plan work? 
Now, one course of action might be to just stick with this, even if it's not working very well. But an open uh, feedback loop in the critical thinking model allows us to use the results to redefine the problem, create a revised plan, implement, and reevaluate. So we're constantly refining this process so that it's getting the best results. So I love these optical illusions, and you've probably seen these before. But the idea is that there are different perspectives for looking at absolutely everything. And oftentimes, what we see depends on how we're looking. So what image do you see when you first look at the image? On the one on the left, do you see the duck or the rabbit? On the one on the right, do you see the young woman or do you see the old woman? Can you see the other image? What enables you to make the switch? Where do you need to look or what do you need to shut out or see differently? Can you see both at once? So I use this as kind of a, a challenge because I'd seen these before and I knew that I had previously seen the old woman and the young woman in the image on the left. But when I first looked at it, I couldn't. So I spent some time squinting. I spent some time looking away, looking back, looking at the corners of the picture until in fact, I could see the alternate image. But this is a good little practice test, I think, um, for, to remind us that there are different ways of looking at things. And you might ask folks in your household um, how they see these things and have some fun with it. So oftentimes there's more than one answer. Reality can be so complex that equally valid observations from different perspectives can appear to be contradictory. So we look at these two folks, the one on the left and the one on the right. And the one on the left sees four bars. The one on the right says, no, there's three bars. So what do you all see? Can you see bars? Can you see staircases? How open can you allow your mind to be to accept that there are multiple answers that be, need to be considered correct. And I think these things are very poignant in today's world where from what we hear around us are such absolute opinions that we just are sure that others are wrong and our opinion is correct. And in fact, if we were that person, we'd think what they do. So, it's hard to, to really be open-minded and to realize that we approach situations with a built-in prejudice and um, some obstacles. So I'm hoping that this workshop challenges those things for you. So this is another uh, kind of practice. There's lots of information here, but it is, it is worthwhile to really examine this. So the following scenario is a popular ethical dilemma called the Heinz, the Heinz Dilemma. So I'm going to describe these and challenge you to think about different ways of looking at it. So in a town long time ago, a woman was near death from a specific kind of cancer. There was one drug that the doctors thought would save her. It was a form of radium that a druggist in the same town had recently discovered. The drug was very expensive to make, but the druggist was charging 10 times 
what the drug cost him to produce. He paid $200 for the radium and charged $2,000 for a very small dose of the drug. The sick woman's husband, named Hines, went to everyone he knew to borrow the money. But he could only get together about a thousand, which was half what the druggist wanted. He told the druggist his wife was dying and asked him to consider the situation, sell it cheaper, or let him pay off what he didn't have later. But the druggist said, no, I discovered the drug and I'm going to make money from it. So Heinz got desperate, broke into the man's laboratory to steal the drug for his wife. Should Heinz have broken into the laboratory to steal the drug for his wife? Why or why not? So I'm sure you realize that this polling question would have been what your opinion is about that. And I'd love to know um, what your thinking is about this and what informs your decision, whether the druggist's action of pricing so far above cost makes it okay to steal, or if it's just wrong to steal. What's interesting about this dilemma, and I, I have a sense you've probably heard something of this nature um, throughout school or different situations you've been, that it's been examined from many different perspectives. It was used uh, kind of as an age study, a developmental age study, the difference between how a adolescent might vote on this, how a teenager might see it, how an adult might see it. It's also been examined uh, according to uh, gender factors. If men are more likely to vote one way, or if women have an inclination to work that way. So um, at the end, if we have time for question and answers, and hopefully we will, that may be a time that you might be able to throw in your opinion um, in, the, in the chat section of the control panel that you see. But it's a provocative, a provocative question um, in large part. So now we have this critical thinking wheel. So this is the interactive process of critical thought. And it brings it all together. It brings what we've looked at in terms of skills, in terms of thinking styles, in terms of our ability to flex uh, our knowledge in these areas. So we look at the inform and describe section where we begin. Clarify what we need to know, what you already know, and what information you have about your issue or topic. So we might look at what these thinking styles would include. Is this systematic? In all likelihood, it just might be. The second block, discover and explore. Look at your issue or topic more closely. Start to be more directed and purposeful in seeking information. So what kind of thinking style might this be? Analytical? You may have other ideas as well. Third block, negotiate and cooperate. Consider here different perspectives. Engage in discussion with others, open discussion. So this might call upon open-mindedness, insightfulness. Next, we test and revise. Weigh up the evidence, test different ideas and alternatives, make decisions about what to do next. This is more analytical. And then integrating and and applying, bring together various ideas that you've considered in order to consolidate and articulate a new understanding and may make revisions 
as we begin this open feedback loop again. These styles might include insightfulness and a systematic way of thinking. So we have kind of another little uh, test that you can do on your own. There's lots of ways to interpret or use this worksheet. I picked one. You might decide to use it differently. How I looked at this first one was how does an inquisitive thinking style compare with an analytical thinking style? I thought of what is the evidence for and against using each in a particular situation? And what are the biases in these sources? Where does the information come? Where does the information come from? Then I looked at how my choice was related to my goal. What am I trying to accomplish? What am I trying to learn? So then in this next one, I looked at describing the situation from somebody else's perspective. How would my manager see it? How would my coworkers see it? How would I, if I were sitting in their chair and their shoes, what would be their perspectives? How did different points in time impact the significance? of my perspective. What if I were more rested, more relaxed? How would different situations, different points in time and what's going on in my life affect the way I saw it? And then what is the relationship to state of mind to thinking style? If I'm in a hurry, and trying to get something done, am I going to choose one thinking style over, over another? If I'm more flooded in terms of what my own life is like, is that going to affect it? And then what is significant about my own flexibility, self-knowledge, and mindfulness? How do these things impact? my ability to choose thinking styles, flex them, and uh, be able to see what's most effective. So I hope that you know, you'll print this off and maybe use it as a way of thinking about um, how you see things and how you could practice critical thinking. Another quiz. So if we were in the room together, there'd be lots of ways to get good feedback. We're a little challenged in that. So we have to use our imagination. So what prevents us in our daily lives from thinking more critically? It's not hard to figure out if we're stressed, if we're burdened by lots of different competing thoughts and activities, it's going to be hard. I think uh, how invested we are in the situation impacts it. Like with those sample scenarios, and the first one was around the possibility of, of finding, of, of securing employment, securing a job. What's our stake in it? Is it a work situation? Is it a home situation? How does that impact? Um, our ability to use critical thinking. What are two skills needed to uh, enhance our critical thinking? This is those when we talked early on about being able to slow down, being able to set our, our own agendas aside. So I would say it's mindfulness, helpful. Emotional intelligence is helpful. Our ability to kind of what I call self-regulate. So having a sense of when um, our own 
kind of stress mechanisms jump in and interfere with our ability to think, make decisions. Um, so I would say those things, um, being able to um, assess more clearly and being able to slow down to make it more important. And then, of course, if we were together doing a, doing a polling question, I'd say, what is the one thing that you'll take away from this seminar? What will you take with you to, um, to work on? Would it be that you'll think about mindfulness, that you'll uh, practice different thinking styles in different situations? that you'll give a lot of thought to checking your own prejudices or where your stereotypes uh, click in. And also putting yourself in other people's shoes in terms of your own perspectives. So to review, and it looks like we're going to give you a lot of kind of time to either ask questions or to finish your lunch or take a walk. Um, but to review, like most things, critical thinking requires continual practice. We get better the more we do something, the more we practice. And it takes two to three weeks to really uh, set new habits in place to seed them. So it will take uh, attention to that. We can develop our thinking skills over our lifespan to become more flexible. So it's not as if, if you haven't done this by the time you're 30, you're not going to be able to. If we open up our mind and open up our thinking, we'll do it throughout our lifespan into old age. Critical thinking is necessary to effective and efficient personal and professional relationships. It helps us navigate these things. And the world is going to become more and more complex. So we need more and more tools to help us navigate this complex world. Lastly, there are many resources to help us strengthen the critical thinking muscle and we'll present them now. So first, there's a foundation for critical thinking, www.criticalthinking.org, to stimulate your thinking. There's the Global Digital Think Citizen Foundation, where some of this information actually did come from. Apps that you can put on your smartphone or tablets. Neuronation. Lumosity, which is a popular one. Stop, breathe, and think. And games. Tetris, Guess the Code, The Sims, and Flight Pilot Simulator. I'll bet Flight Pilot Simulator is a challenging one. I oftentimes think of <laughs> the different hats and the different decision-making tools you have to have to be a uh, pilot or uh, an air traffic controller. And then there's a great book called Six Thinking Hats by Edward de Bono, which is another source that uh, this came from. So thank you all very much for taking your time um, being uh, present for this developing critical skills. And thanks for the questions and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye.